Rugby finals. What? Ended in a spectacular I will never win. get over this. New Zealand. Snoop Dogg. Edging our friend. Watch that. Claiming gold. Yes. Okay. Let's go. Look at him. Look at him. This, this ritual right here is hundreds and hundreds of years old, too. It's not nothing that they just made up. No, no. Knows, this is, this is powerful. It's also an extreme amount of pressure on the producers of the Olympics because they can't cut out of this. Oh, no. You can't you, you can cut out of this and watch what happens. Yeah, yeah, no. They got to let this fly. All of it. They got to let this fly. Every bit of it. Because that's powerful. Next on Rugby Wrap-Up, a Major League Rugby East versus West All-Star game with teams picked by Dan Power, Alex Corbacero, Brian Ray, and Matt McCarthy. Rugby Wrap-Up brought to you in part by the Pig and Whistle, the world's best rugby pub, the Murphy Kennedy Group, founded with the idea that construction can be done better, and Lean and Limber, stretching your way to a healthier lifestyle. Everybody and welcome back to Rugby Wrap Up for this Major League Rugby extravaganza. And you can't have an extravaganza without extravagant people. And there's no four people, well, including yours truly, that are more extravagant in this regard than yours truly, Mr. Alexander the Great Corbusero, Mr. Dan Power, and of course, our friend from north of the border in Canada, Nova Scotia, Mr. Brian Ray, the angry Canadian. Welcome, gentlemen. Brian, I see that you're honoring the Giltinis with your banners behind you. Yeah, we got our favorite uh, Russian Canadian winger, DTH Bender Mervikov, there holding the shield aloft. And uh, out of respect, the last time I had to don some uh, Guiltini's backdrop, I didn't have a logo and I got it flack. So there you go, bright and blue. But Brian, uh, of course, you've got Alex here, who was the scrum coach of that championship team. Alex, congratulations. A few words on, on winning the championship. Oh, thank you, guys. Um, it, it was incredible. Obviously, uh, I would like to say I played a huge part in it, but I only played a real supplementary role. But to be involved at all was fantastic. I think the hard work, the drive, uh, the ability to pull that off in year one with like no sort of blueprint, no depth, no anything to get to the big dance and then to just see the guys actually go out there and play probably our best game or one of our most complete games against a really good side and shut them down. Uh, it was so worthwhile and rewarding, and I'm just proud of the guys. And then we had a great time celebrating afterwards. So uh, uh, it was just an amazing experience and something that I'm grateful to be a part of. And my, I thought I'd left sort of that environment and that part of my life behind and being in it and getting to see the guys experience it was, was like a dream come true to, to be a part of that again. You know, the whole season was basically just their way of getting you to play next year. Well, you never know. You never, you never say never. I did scrum a couple times this year just to dust He's it off. He's back. He's back. Been that, been that a scrum machine at LA. So occasionally, uh, you know, we had to dig in. Me and uh, Haas, Adam Fryer, the GM, uh, have packed down a few times to, to give it to the man. Uh, but uh, nah, you won't see me play it, mate. I, I get too much enjoyment now and seeing guys get it right. Like, okay. What, an what a feeling. It replaces the rush of playing. You heard it here, ladies and gentlemen. Alex Corbacero making his comeback next year with the L.A. Guilty Nieces player coach. So what we're going to do, guys, is pick an MLR All-Star game with two, squ two squads, East and West. And because Brian and I know the East and Dan and Alex, you guys know the West, we're going to change it up in this crazy, wacky, topsy-turvy world. And you guys are going to pick the East and we're going to pick the West. All right? And there are no rules. If a guy played five minutes, he could play on your team. It's the 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 the, uh, the goal, the mission is to smash the other team and win the All Star game. And with with that, why don't we go, Dan? With you're the only one with a hat on, so why don't you start us off at loose head prop? Well, I I would actually do the right thing here as a responsible rugby pundit and defer to the guy who played in the front row, and let Alex pick the entire front row from the east. But uh, I'll nod in approval if that's something that. Uh, you know, I agree with and probably will. All right. Loose head has to be none other than Chance Wengruski. What a diamond in the rough USA rugby are developing here. I, this guy is going to be a force on the international stage, I believe, eventually as well, because he's still so early in his career. So him, fantastic season. Thought he should have started the final. Brian, what do you think? Uh, what do you think I might go with as prop choice? Yeah, we had a conversation uh, about this, a very lengthy conversation about loose head prop. Actually, we went into the funny, the little minute details of a uh, scrum uh, power and everything. Uh, and we came up uh, with a guy out of uh, Austin, Texas, uh, by the name of Wapa, a.k.a. Uh, Jamie McIntosh. That's right. He's no apple, ladies and gentlemen. He's more of a tree and he is perfect 
up front. And we're nothing against chance, but he's on the East and we're in the West and we're, go, we're out to win this thing. We're not here to, to just cover the spread, <laughs> right? Good pick, Brian. Alex, why don't you go ahead with the hooker choice? It, it, it's a tough one on the East. There is you know, a depth of talent. I would say, you know, Fawcett is right up there. Consistency, everything he's done. Uh, Sassani Fengai as well at DC had a great uh, season and he played well for the Eagles. But I'm going to go with uh, Van Rensburg from ATL. I just like what he brings. Uh, I think, you know, the spearhead of the scrum, the maul, the accuracy, uh, the directness and his carries in the 22. He, he's a player that I want on my team, especially if we're going to have to be uh, physical and rough up those boys in the West. Yeah, ATL's line out was absolutely pinpoint this season. Probably only matched by LA and Utah. Uh, so, and a lot of that came down to Janzi van Rensburg. Uh, knows the way to the try line too. Scored some big tries in big moments. So I like that pick. Yeah, just like in the East, lots of good options here in the West, of course. There's Vailanu at LA. Malolo, a fan favorite at Utah. Uh, I like Diego Fortuny in Houston. But we went with an all-rounder in this one. He can score tries. He can play in the set piece really well. James Malcolm out of Seattle. On the, I think that there's loads of good hookers on the West. But Malolo, he only played 10 games, but to me was probably the most impactful hooker in the MLR this season. Physicality, his carries, the driving mall, and then at the scrum as well. He, he's a weapon. Malolo would be my pick. Brian, we're going to be a little bit controversial. We're going to go out of order here. We're going to go this round first. Tight head, and uh, we expect all the fan mail and letters yelling at us, but go ahead and give them, give them, give them, give, give, give them our pick. Yeah, well, for the record, uh, Malolo would come off the bench for us because he'd be a wrecking ball for about 30 minutes. Uh, our tight head prop, uh, well, a familiar name, uh, maybe across a couple teams and someone uh, who maybe was a little bit late arriving this season, but nonetheless left his mark, an Australian by the name of Patrick Ryan. Aye. Paddy. All right, who's your tight head, fellas? On the tight head side, I am going to reward a absolute soldier this season. Dino Waldron gets our tight head nod, nod, I think, 80 minutes consistently for Nola. Um, put it out there for the Eagles as well. I, I do think Grimwald at uh, Atlanta deserves an honorable mention, as well as Talafa at New York. But for me, I think Dino's done enough to secure our tight head spot. <laughs> And the thing about Talafo is that he was brought in initially to be that pinch hitter for 20 minutes at the end of a match at 38 years old. The guy played a ton of minutes in Jersey City on the baking turf, you know. I, I used to play against Talafo in the premiership when I was a baby, at, at, and he was at Wasp, and then he was at Bath. Like, the fact he's still going now is unfreaking believable. And just another reason why you, who are basically a baby in prop years are going to be playing next year as well. Let's go to the back row, the lock position. Dad, why don't you take us with your first pick at number four? Yeah, I'm going to go uh, back to New York and Talafo's teammate, Nate Brakely. Uh, no better engine in MLR than Nate Brakely. No one does more on the ball, off the ball, around the ball than Nate Brakely. Uh, and just an all around great guy as well. So I'm going to throw Nate in the number four. I know you just ticked off my, my, friend from Canada by saying nobody does more at the breakdown than, than Brakely break, uh, breakdown Brakely, but Lucas rumble, but we're not going to bring it up, Brian. We're not going to bring it up. We're just going to go right to our pick. I'll hide my uh, disdain with that uh, remark. Uh, we're going to take uh, the Western equivalent, if you will, of Mr. Brakely uh, leadership embodied, uh, did a, a, an incredible job for uh, the winning team this year. Mr. Dave Dennis. Who, Alex, you are very familiar with, and I have a harumph for him not being on the starting MLR team. I, I agree. I, I think that's a travesty. That guy played every game bar one. He played right up top minutes. He's basically a coach and player in one. If you saw the driver and the leadership that he brought in a team that, you know, could have suffered from complacency or fallen off with, with some of the issues along the way, like, him and a few other key leaders are massive drivers in that environment off the field, which probably means, like, I, I've seen that personally, so that would mean that he's a guaranteed on my team sheet, where maybe some people seeing don't get to see that. But if you equate what he did on the field, with what I'm telling you that he brings off the field, it's a no-brainer that he's got to be in that team. Dan, is he the best-looking lock in the league? Uh, probably, yeah. yeah. Just, just full disclosure, I had him in the first 15 for MLR. It didn't get through in the end, but he was... And, and for me, I agree with Corbs. Getting a chance to look behind the scenes at the Giltinis after that final and go to the locker room and see what 
everyone I spoke to, I said, this is the best culture I've seen in, in like most rugby teams around the world. Okay, guys, give us your choice. Our second uh, second row spot is going to go to Monson from Atlanta. Another absolute driver in the team. Similar as we talked about Dave Dennis on the West, he is the, one of the talisman for this Atlanta pack, which is one of the most vicious, sort of uh, ferocious packs in the season to play against. And so for me, he's a no-brainer as an our team. And one of the nicer guys that you meet off the pitch. Brian, what's our second lock position uh, pick? Yeah, we're going to destroy your lineup with this one. Sorry, guys, but we're going to go down to Austin and pick an ex-all black by the name of Isaac Ross. Boom. Drop the mic and exit. You hear? You heard that noise? That was the mic drop. Yeah. So we are we are easily winning this match so far, but maybe they could change it in the back row players. Let's go to the let's go to the sixth position. Dan, why don't you start us off with six? Tough one to call here. Tough one to call. Corbs, what do you think? I'm, I'm tempted to actually pick someone out of position here. Can we do that? Is that against the rules? Ooh. No. Because I'm really torn at eight between Conradi and Dolan. I think I want them both in the side. So I almost want to put Cam at six and just let him be a wide running loose forward at six. I'm going to defer. I'm being told we can allow to do that. Yeah. I'm fine with the karate at six. We'll take Cam at eight. Okay. We flip flop him. I'm happy with that as well. Brian, why don't we just counter punch? Well, let's counter punch with our six and eight. All right. Well, uh, no shoehorning here. We're going for uh, the best six in MLR this season. Just a dominant player uh, out of LA by the name of Angus Cottrell. Uh, complete workhorse going forward, defense, the whole thing. A- outstanding season. Number eight, uh, a wide ranging South African bloke who also will cause some nightmares for your life. A good matchup against Cam Dolan, I might add. Uh, a bloke by the name of Rickert Hatting out of Seattle. And fellow teammates with Team USA. Uh, we have to go backwards now to number seven since you guys went out of turn. Alex, let's go to Dan. Oh, that's dangerous. Seven, such a good uh, – another. it's probably the strongest position in MLR. Like you got Hooker and seven. There's so many good sevens to choose from. Uh, pre-haircut, Lucas Rumble. I don't want uh, Rumble after he got a haircut because he was, he was not as good. Uh, you got Matt Heaton in Atlanta. I'm going to go with Rumble. I think, I think, especially when you look at the body of his work earlier in the season, when the arrows were a bit more competitive, competitive as well. Like his work at the breakdown, his all-round sort of game as well, line-out option, carries, and just the leader of the dog in him. I want, I want another leader in my pack, um, and, and so I'm picking Rumble. Free haircut Rumble, though, right? That's what we're going. Yeah, with. yeah. Long hair. Long hair, beard. Yeah, good. Tip the cap at that selection. Uh, full approval from this side of the aisle. Uh, our pick, we're not going to dawdle about here. No sense messing about. There's only one guy here to pick in the number seven jersey. Plays in San Diego. Name, Chris Robshaw. Chris Chris Robshaw. Boom. Superstar. We are crushing you guys. Crushing you guys. And we're going to take no a quick... Song. What? No song Wuchik. Yeah. We, whoa, whoa, whoa. We get the subs after the, after the first round. All right, but we got to take a quick break. We'll be right back with our backline picks for this Major League All-Star extravaganza right after this. If you're in New York City and want to watch some great rugby, have some great food, and some great times, go to the world's best rugby pub, The Pig & Whistle on West 36th Street. Been blind since I was four. And I've never seen a beer commercial or a beer label. None of that stuff influences me. I drink beer because of the taste. And my beer is Pabst Blue Ribbon. It has a taste on the flavor. What do you think is on the label? I think there's a, a naked woman riding on a unicorn, jumping over fire. Oh, that's good beer. Mr. Dan Power, Mr. Brian Ray, I'm Matt McCarthy. And guys, we are going right to our picks for the back line in this MLR All-Star game in our heads. And Brian, let's start it off with our choice at Scrummy. Yeah, uh, complete live wire. A uh, guy did everything, running, attacking, kicking. And uh, I'll be surprised if he doesn't have a Super Rugby contract next season. Harrison Goddard. Harrison Goddard. 
How about that, guys? Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Uh, no brainer to me, mate. Yeah. He, he was my league MVP, to be honest. Well, I'll, I'll go a guy on the opposite end of his career who's won a World Cup, played for the All Blacks, Crusaders, all around the world, Andy Ellis, who was an absolute revelation at nine this year for New York. Brilliant player, brilliant human being as well. So love that leadership at nine and the linchpin there. Old versus new, so it'll be a good little battle. All right, we're going to go to number 10. Uh, it's a tough one at 10. Uh, there's good options around the league, but Robertson, for me, I thought he was a real spark for uh, for Old Glory. He's attacking, uh, you know, mindset. His looks for little chips, his running ability. He's all around this to control the game. I, I think he'd be a great addition at us for 10. Brian, we, that's a respectful Honest choice, I guess, right? But we've got a bit of a controversy on our hands. Uh, we've got well, a guy uh, named Matt Gitto, but we also got a guy named Joe Peterson, Brian. That's right. He, uh, a little veteran uh, action from California, runs well, uh, you know, can kick, does everything, leadership. We're going with Mr. Peterson at number 10. What do you got to say about you. that, fellas? JP, pal. Oh, I know where I'm sending the first phase to let the channel. I'm sending first phase down. It's got nothing to do with uh, Gitto having not responded to come on the show. It has nothing to do with that yet. But well, hang on a second. Matt Gitto is just being traded to New York, and he'll be stepping in at number 10 for the Eastern team. Woohoo! Take him. Oh, sorry. Uh, got to check my emotions here. All right, that's good. Who's number 11? This guy holding up his shield right here, DTH Van der Merwe. Is go. it Van der Merwe or Van der Merwe? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Daniel Talifer Holman. Van der Merwe or Van der Merwe? Tomato, tomato, it doesn't matter. He's on our wing. Who's on yours? I'm going to go Julian Dominguez from Nola Gold, the greatest finisher in Major League Rugby. There you go. That was the is, worst Argentinian Is he from China? Ever. Yeah, sorry, Julian, but you definitely uh, much better than my attempted Argentinian accent there. That was pretty Julian. good. That was pretty Alex, you concur Pinterest. with that? Yeah, I'm fine with that. Strike great, finishing the amount of tries, his one-on-one ball carrying. It's a great uh, weapon to sort of try and match up against uh, DTH. Brian, let's go to our number 14 choice. Oh, skipping across yeah. to the other wing. All right, yeah. we're looking for a Teaser. little X factor here. Little magic, little combination. Guy out of Utah by the name of Mika Crusade. Oh, snap. Oh, snap. Count of that, guys. What are you thinking? Do you want to, you want to go a little bit of thunder for our lightning and go big Montero, the I giant Mont- winger? I was like, maybe I'd stick five or, or five or someone. I don't know where to get five into my team, but I think he's got to be. Let's, a- put, let's put Dougie Fresh on the wing. I like that call, yeah. five. What a player. Yeah. What a player. I, I look at the meat made this year. All right. They are uh, clearly that- rattled, Brian. They are clearly rattled here with our selections. We're flush other- with options. I- yeah, we're going to go with Dougie Fife. Uh, could have potentially played him at 15, potentially at 13. He stood out for um, the Free Jacks and all of those positions uh, to me. But his, his running meters, his line breaks, uh, his kicking game, his defensive work, he, he's been the full package this season in MLR, and, and he had to be on our team somewhere. Solid choice. Solid choice. But we are still kicking your asses. And we're going to continue to do so with our choice at number 12. Yeah, guy who won Team of the Week honors at uh, both center positions and open side flanker, Mr. Bill Meeks. William Meeks. He is not Meek at all. Yeah, we've got we've got some options here, haven't we? We're, how are we playing here, Corbs? Are we going to go that, straight at him? That's really the, the issue is how we're going to play. I think is, is, is how we're going to pick our, our 12. You're going to run away from him or are you going to go back at him? I think at the 12th position, uh, we're going to go with uh, Duplessis at Nola. Uh, his footwork before the line of contact, the line breaks, the offload game, physicality and defense. Um, there's no sort of secret of where we're coming for, you know, especially with Peterson at 10 for you. We're, we're coming up the middle. So we, we, we picked a big piece of kit to try and deliver that. They're already altering their game plan because we went with Peterson. They were planning for Gitto. We just smashed that strategy session right <laughs> to pieces. They've, they're all asunder right now, Brian. And wait till they hear our pick at 13. I mean, it's a clear sign of weakness. A discussion, confusion. They don't know what's going on. They had no preparation whatsoever. We don't even have to explain our decisions. Yeah. Adam we Ashley play, Cooper. We could play with 13 at this point. Adam Ashley Cooper, he's destroying this Boom! Team. Come on, guys. Boom! Look at their stun. Deer in the headlights looks for both of them. Ben Lesage. 
First team MLR over Adam Ashley Cooper. Therefore, by default, take away the extra 100 international caps and the extra 10 years experience, but Lesage over Adam Ashley Cooper. That actually hurt me a lot to say that, a lot. Wow. Okay. All right. And Brian, of course, with the only cap that matters in his world, the TNA cap of the Toronto Arrows. Good pick, but we're crushing it. And this is the coup d'etat the pick at 15. Why don't you guys go first as you're bleeding out? What about your old teammate? we got Foden, took a left. Foden. It's Foden, took a left. Brian, why are you giggling at the mention of Ben Foden? Foden had a good year. No, I'm it's laughing Tom, at the Tom whole Meyer. conversation. <laughs> Again, Foden, we're ready. Foden. We're good to go. They're in a shambles. Look at them. That's yeah. got took a left. Yeah. We've got, we got decent wings that can marshal the backfield as well. I, I think yeah. they are. All right. Second oh. half of the match against the gold in New Orleans for Toronto when Tuchelet was injured, changed the complexion of the season for the Arrows, in my humble estimation. No, I agree. And for those reasons, Matthew, that is why uh, me and Dan are going to pick uh, Tuchelet from the Arrows as our 15. Two fine choices in Lesage and Tuchelet. I applaud that. Tip of the cap, two tips. There you go. But uh, I'm sorry, guys, but we've got the game breaker of game breakers at fullback. Again, this is just unfair. I mean, you might as well just give us the game. Uh, Mikey Teo out of Utah. Game over. Done. See you later. Bye-bye. All right. We, we, I know that you guys are you're, you're in a shambles. You're, you're reeling. But we have to pick two subs in the pack off the bench and one in the backfield. Who's your first sub off the bench? Probably a front row, Dan. Who is it? Corbs, you, you handle the big boys, I'll handle the pretty ones. We're, we're coming for you at scrum time, Matt. There's no sort of secret behind it. So we, we, we've picked an absolute weapon, to, you know, some might call him our bomb squad as such. To come off the bench, uh, we've got Manasa Saulo from Atlanta, former Fijian international, nicknamed the Starfish down there. He's an absolute uh, weapon and he is the master of coming on and just getting scrum penalties to grind out a game. And here in the East Coast, we're coming for it. Full disclosure, weren't you hired as a consultant in the scrum for Atlanta? Atlanta? Yes, that's a yes. That's a yes. Brian, give him our pick off the bench. Let's make this entertaining uh, because this is just dumped into just garbage conversation going on. We're going to make something entertaining. Our Patty Ryan's getting a little bit tired, so we're going to pull off Patty Ryan, and we're going to put on Patty Ryan. Patty Ryan. Ryan. Austin Gilgrodis, AG Rugby, Patty Ryan off the bench and smash into your scrum. You want some beef coming in in the sec for it? And, and all you got to do is say, Patty, get in there. And two guys run for the ball. Patty, come over here. Patty, all you got to do, right? Easy, easy smash mouth rugby. Your next pick off the bench. Or- I'm bringing in Dom. I'm bringing Dom off the bench for some last 20 minute. Uh, you know, we, we've got Cam Dolan, we've got Camradi. I bring on Dom, another big athletic, rangy player. Put him in at eight. Um, impact for that last 20 minutes or so. Good luck trying to stop that guy. All right. Yeah. Well, we won't have to try to stop him because our guy will be zipping up and down the pitch. And Brian, tell him who it is. Yeah, it should be hard to figure this one out. You wanted him, you got him. Mr. Sam Wuching, flying Woo! in, wrecking machine. See you later. You, can, you can't wreck if, you, if you're chasing somebody up and down the pitch, guys, and you'll be chasing Wooching. Yeah. Next pick, Dan, this is your, your baby, the back line. Who's your pick in the back line off the bench? Waka. Waka. Let's go. Bodine Waka. Ooh, New England free I like jet. That. Versatile, versatile. Versatile. Can kick. from Game breaker. Circuit game breaker. breaker player. Yeah. But, yeah. again, he'll be completely neutralized by our freight train. Pick him, Brian. Well, we're going to go with someone who's play, started at scrum half, fly half, wing, and fullback this year, Mr. Versatility himself from Seattle Seawolves, J.P. Smith. Dan, go ahead with your second back pick. Well, I love the pick from Corbs in Jean-Claude Jason Dam, but I'm going to go with the other kung fu master himself, Danny the Tussman Tussitala, coming off the bench as well. So now we've got our coverage throughout our whole back line and we are rock solid. It's going to be a 38, 37 in the dying seconds piece for the win. That's a very good pick. And if you haven't seen it on Amazon prime, Jean-Claude Van Damme's new mini series where he is himself as a washed up actor who gets involved in this espionage plot. You have to watch it. It's very I'm, funny. I'm gonna watch it. You haven't watched uh-huh. it. Oh, it's, no. it's, it's great. No. He just makes fun of himself. Feelings me already. Brian, let's put the cherry on the top. 
All right. Well, here we go. We'll, we'll pick the big man himself. Uh, proud in the midfield, proud on the wing. You know, throw the ball up there to try all day. Ross Neal from the Seattle Seawolves, six foot five of power, uh, smashing over for tries. How you do it? How you do it? No, no, Basson. Over Ross? Can't, listen, you can't, you know, you, you can't have everybody. He's certainly, uh, he's certainly, uh, he sounds like a tennis player meets a musical instrument in Bjorn Basson, but. He's actually an exceptional rugby player, but we can't have everybody. We can't have everybody. And we are just focused, laser focused on decimating your team. So what was the final score here? 71 to three, right? Yeah. East one. It was a good game. 20, 24, nine to us. We don't even allow a try. That's what I'm saying. We have three pens. Team yeah. Power Corps against uh, Rugby Wrap-Up America's News. Good. Yeah. All right. Well, we should get this one on the pitch, actually. And and lobby to have this actually played out because this would be something that everybody on the planet would watch, right? I, I do think there's a definite space for it. I think this year, obviously with COVID, logistically getting to the final, getting that game on CBS was the finish line, amazing achievement. But long term, an All Star game would be so much fun, even if there's a break or even yeah. a new Eagles versus a. MLR International 15 as a warm-up test or something for the Eagles. Like, same with Canada or something. Like, all of this uh, to me, or Canada plays East, uh, USA play West, and then they play again, and they go into the test. Like, the possibilities of where we're getting to are so exciting and, 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 and going to be amazing. We're just so early that it's hard to just, in a second, say, oh, we want to do this and this. But I think future-wise, it, it, it really is exciting to see that. And this panel should pick that team, both teams. That's what I'm saying. And if, no, good. No, that's not, not going to happen. Okay. All right. Fair enough. All right, gentlemen, I want to thank you for uh, your time. On behalf of this, Alex Corbisero, Mr. Dan Power, Mr. Brian Ray, I'm Matt McCarthy for Rugby Wrap-Up. We'll see you next time. But in the meantime, please check out our other segments, including the Rugby Odds, featuring WWE Hall of Famer John Bradshaw Layfield, the world's best sports better ever in the Philly Godfather, and Rugby's Gift, Gift A. Bailu, our Major League Rugby show, Martial Law, The Zack Attack, and please sign up for our Rugby Wrap-Up Red Cross Blood Donor Team. <laughs>